PVC is something we use every day. It's in our furniture, our houses, our cars, and even our credit cards are made of PVC. We see it everywhere, but most of us do not know how it's made or know of the work behind creating PVC. PVC stands for polyvinyl chloride. To explain how PVC is made, we first need to look at the raw materials to see how they react together to make PVC plastic, technically known as the PVC polymer. To make PVC, you take a chemical called vinyl chloride monomer, VCM for short, and you polymerize it. This means that you react the chemical VCM with itself over and over again to make a long molecular chain which is the polymer or plastic. Making VCM is complicated. Usually you first react together the chemicals ethylene and chlorine. This gives you the intermediate chemical called ethylene dichloride or EDC. This process is called chlorination. It is this intermediate product that will then be used to make the vinyl chloride. Chlorination reactor. As you can see here we have a reactor into which the ethylene is being pumped. You can see the pipe with the ethylene as it is covered in ice because the temperature of the ethylene is below zero. The ethylene and chlorine react together in a process called chlorination. This second process is called oxychlorination. By combining chlorination and oxychlorination processes, nothing is lost and the most is made from the raw materials. You then need to convert the EDC into vinyl chloride, or VCM. Cracking EDC in the furnace. The EDC is heated in a furnace in a process called cracking. Using heat, the EDC is split into VC and hydrochloric acid, a byproduct that is sent back to the oxychlorination unit for reuse. Coming out of the furnace, you have split the EDC into VCM and hydrochloric acid, but if the reaction is not quickly stopped, the VCM can decompose further. Quenching. In order not to degrade the VCM, the heat needs to be removed very quickly. This is called quenching. You loop the VCM coming out of the furnace through long tubes which act as heat exchangers. Cooling water. This process of cooling during quenching, as well as during chlorination, requires large quantities of water. The water is cooled in cooling units and recirculated into the process. This also explains the water vapour in the air, that some people could mistake for smoke, which is in fact simply heat being released through water vapour. Purification. The VCM is then purified in distillation columns and is then piped for storage in large metal spheres. These distillation columns are easily spotted as they tower over the plant. Control room. 
VCN process is continuous, non-stop, 24-7, contrary to the polymerization of VCM, which is done in batches. Both processes are closely monitored in specific control rooms. The whole process is highly automated and human intervention is essentially to control the process and to maintain and clean the equipment. Autoclave polymerization. The actual polymerization of the VCM is done in a reactor called an autoclave. Autoclaves work a bit like pressure cookers. PVC plants will typically have a number of autoclaves that will vary in size and that will produce different grades of PVC, which are then sold for manufacturing a variety of consumer products. Here is a room full of small autoclaves. The size of autoclaves can reach over 100 cubic meters in volume and can be very impressive. This autoclave is hidden behind a staircase and pipes and is as high as a two-story building. In the batch reaction, the autoclave will first be filled with water and then additives for the reaction and the VCM will then be pumped into the reactor. The autoclave is heated and the VCM then reacts into the polymer. Stripping. After a predetermined period of time the reaction is stopped and the contents of the autoclave is sent to a stripper, where unreacted VCM is separated from the polymer. This recovered VCM is sent for purification and later reuse. By this way the monomer is kept in a closed loop avoiding emissions to atmosphere. Centrifuging. The PVC is now a slurry. The next steps are a bit like drying wet clothes. The PVC needs to be dried, first in a centrifuge, which is similar to the spin cycle in a washing machine. It removes excess water. Drying. Then the process goes through a hot air dryer. The size of the dryer varies. Here you can see a large dryer that processes approximately 500 tonnes of PVC a day. At this stage you can see the PVC is a fine white powder. An interesting piece of equipment is the sieve, which passes the dried PVC through a mesh to remove any lumps to obtain a fine powder of consistent quality. Here you can see a sieve and someone examining the filtered PVC through a control door which allows samples to be taken to monitor quality standards. Storage. The VCM storage spheres are remarkable because of their distinctive shape and the fact that they are generally very visible when you see a VCM plant. PVC recovery. The water used in the autoclave and in the stripping is also treated and recovered. The PVC looks like a white powder and here you can see it being recovered and the water being cleaned. This ensures that there is no waste. Packaging and dispatch. Now the PVC is a powder which needs to be stored. It is put into large silos ready for distribution to customers. Some of the PVC powder is packaged into bags, similar in appearance to bags of cement. These bags are stored in warehouses and transported off-site on trucks. 
Some of the PVC also leaves the site in bulk tanker lorries. 